so here I am uh, walking through the mall as you can see my face is a little sweaty right now because as I told you in my last short video clip it is extremely hot in here well not extremely like I'm feeling a bit of a breeze now as I'm walking but it's still a very very warm place compared to outside though the sun is warm outside as well um, I'm actually um, I'm actually dressed in my court case clothes but I'm wearing sneakers I'm wearing sneakers until I get to the courtrooms and then I'm going to uh, swap the sneakers for some um, dress boots so uh, I'll look the part when I go into the courtroom ah I always get a bit nervous when I um, before court hearings now what I want to explain is the fact that just shoulder my Nike bag not that I don't worry I, I mean I'm I'm poor at the moment well actually I'm quite wealthy but um, that's a that's a case that'll have to go through the courts um, but one of the things I wanted to explain about um, the court hearing that I'm going to is that it's not actually a court hearing it's actually a um, what do they call it judicial review so it's a judicial review that is um, basically just just that it's just that it's just a review but what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and ask the judge to give me five minutes to talk so that I can expose the absolute as I said before there's many convolutions but I want to expose the absolute bold bloated disgusting lies that uh, child youth and family have said about me and partly the part of the reason for that is because of this lady Māori lady Sally um, in Oriwa she was okay you guys have seen those um, videos circulating on Facebook where parents will set up a camera and I'll go this way parents will set up a camera and a, a, a hidden camera and catch the babysitter doing really really t terrible things to their child well that's what happened to me except that I didn't have a camera so what happened what but what I did have was my psychic ability so what happened was my arms getting tired let's change arms so what happened was um, when I confronted the uh, Sally about um, molesting my daughter and abusing her, like hitting her really, really badly, um, yeah. and she, well, she turned it around on me. She, she did. She didn't at the time. She didn't at the time. But I learned later that she made a phone call to the police, who um, took her side of the story, and. Uh, and got me put under the um, mental health act and like like put me through child youth and family and all the rest of it when it was actually Sally that uh, did the molesting um, and Sally went around the community like trying to convince as many many people as she could um, of her lies and you know what some of these people swallowed those lies whole they swallowed them whole so this is that's one of the things that that went on and there was another thing <clears throat> my son had a friend named Joey this was another babysitting experience and what happened was I left my precious beautiful darling sweetheart gorgeous little girl um, in the care of Joey's mum and Joey now I don't know who else was in the house at the time that I did that but as far as I was aware I'd only left my daughter while I uh, in the care of Joey and um, his mum Debbie now while I was gone I don't know who was there but my psychic ability tells me that uh, it was Joey 
that raped my daughter Shalise. And it's not just my psychic ability, Shalise tried to con um, tell me that so many times. And I found it so, so goddamn hard to believe because, um, because um, both Joey and his mum are like the nicest people you could meet. Nicest people you could meet. And oh my god, I never would have believed it. So, anyway, um, I finally did. Well, well, I believed it on the day uh, because on the day I um, I'm going to light up a cigarette now. On the day, um, as soon as I walked into walked back from my business meeting. Now, at the time, I was running a business called Salewise New Zealand Limited. And I was managing director for my own company. It was doing very well. I had signed up over 25 of New Zealand's largest corporate companies. And there are people who can testify to that because after that, uh, after that happened, um, my business got stolen. So anyway, anyway, um, getting back to the what I was saying. So when I got back to... Um, Joey, uh, Joey and his mum's house, as soon as I walked in the door after having attended one of my business meetings, oh by the way, I, I, I broke my no smoking promise, I'm so sorry about that, but I'm so stressed at the moment. Um, now as soon as I walked in the door, um, Shalise burst into tears now this is my real daughter this is not my um, this is not my um, heart adopted daughter that Shelley's in, in eventually got swapped with uh, this is my um, real daughter my, my daughter for whom I have who, who made this earth, who made earth feel like heaven for me that's I'm talking about you Shelley's so I hope you're watching this and I'm sorry about mum's memory loss. Now what happened was, uh, when I got back from my business meeting, walked in the door, as soon as Shirley saw me, uh, now this is not the girl that I'm going to this court case for, this is the girl that's pretty much stolen my daughter's identity, but she didn't mean to, it's not her fault, she's just got caught up in what's happening with the SIF system and stuff. So, um, when I walked in the door, Shelley's burst into tears. This was at um, Debbie and Joey's house, and uh, Debbie's got a husband named Kerry, and they've got uh, Joey's got a brother. Debbie and Kerry have got a son named Sam as well. So. Um, when I walked in the door, my daughter just burst into tears, almost as though she was holding the tears back and maybe someone had told her to stop crying or growled her to stop crying, but I know my daughter and she would have cried a long time after, after being raped so violently and she was raped extremely violently um, and so I walked in the door, there she was crying. Uh, burst into tears rather and um, I went straight to her because Shalise and I had a very very close bond and I like to think we still do uh, because my love for her is, has not changed it's only deepened over the years um, and I know that she feels the same way as well and it's hard for a love to deepen when you don't see each other all the time but that's what a mother's, that's the kind of love a mother has for her child. So, um, particularly in my case, because Shalise and I had, we not just had our, our human connection, we also had a deep, deep spiritual connection, whereby she could read my thoughts sometimes, I could read hers, I'd hear her talking <laughs> in, the, in the other room, and I'd, you know, there's no way I could have heard that, and yet I'd walk in as though, we were already having a conversation and I'd start talking to her about something she, she would think or, or she'd be thinking or, or saying or things like that. So anyway, Shalise burst into tears and um, I said, Shalise, what's wrong? What's wrong, baby? What's wrong? 
and um she um I can't remember if she said Joey raped me but it's almost like Debbie wouldn't allow her like Debbie had growled her not to say anything about it anyway uh, being the kind of mum I am like I pull no punches and I, I get to the bottom of shit that's just who I am I'm a telepathic investigator as well so um, this is the kind of thing I do in fact you would think I'm a police officer except that I don't work for the New Zealand government <laughs> So I, I said, oh, hang on, hang on a minute, Deb, uh, Debbie, um, and, and, and I was playing it cool with Debbie at this time, um, because I didn't know what had happened, so I, I instinctively said, Shalise, lie down, Where, where's, you know, where, what's wrong, where's it sore, lie down. Now, she would have told me all this, or what, you know, indicated, given me indications, but, um, I can't remember what she said, I honestly can't remember what she said or even if she did say anything. But I, I knew, my psychic ability was going off and I knew, so I instinctively laid her on the couch and I said to her, baby, sorry for my, what, what mum's going to do, I'm just going to check your um, fanny and make sure everything's okay. And when I pulled her undies down, oh my god, not only was she we not wearing the same undies that I had given her to Deb with, but there was blood on her undies and I was I was like in shock I was like oh my god how did this happen what happened what happened and um, I'm pretty sure she did say at the time Joey raped me but I don't know if she did maybe she said it after we got out of the house but she definitely did tell me like a day or so later she told me that when we got to the car and and things like that um and yes i i am i am trying to recall recall the incident and there there, there is some um blocks to my memory and exactly what took place after that but um before i left i said to deb deb i'm going to leave this for you to sort out i'm going to take my daughter home and i want a report about this when I come back well next time I came back I wasn't welcome in the house everyone was just fucking oh just not talking to me like normal and of course by that stage and this was a, a day or so later when I came back by that stage I'd completely forgotten that Shalise had been raped. Anyway, I'll leave the story there and I'll go on to how this relates to today's court hearing. So, what happened was Deb and Debbie and Kerry have a police officer who they're friends with, his name is Terry. And every now and then Terry buys, um, sorry, uh, Kerry buys Terry a bottle of bourbon or, or a bottle of, of alcohol and they're really they're really chummy chummy so when my daughter what happened when we got home is my daughter um, asked me to call the police so I did and she told the, I, I said oh look I'm, I'm really sorry about this but my daughter keeps saying that she's been raped now what all my viewers need to understand is I used to suffer from a memory loss so acute that always after sleep, after sleeping at night, I would, and it wasn't just at night, sometimes it would happen during the day. Um, if anything traumatic happened, by a few hours later or, or during sleep, my mind would just completely divert from it. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a, um, a reaction. Um, it was kind of like a like a knee-jerk reaction to trauma so every time something traumatic happened the the memories would just they wouldn't get wiped from my mind my mind would just store them in the back somewhere and not refer to them as we would normally do under these sort of circumstances so I don't know how much more time I've got uh, to record this but um, so when we called the police, guess who got to investigate the case? None other than Kerry and Deb's police officer friend. And he poured water 
cold water all over the case um, but and, and but I will I do remember that at the time on the phone call when Shalise called the police when I called the police and I even let Shalise talk to them and she told them in her in her baby way that she'd been raped like Dave raped me Joey raped me Arden raped me um, and she was and she, so the police did actually take that seriously but then good old Terry took the case and uh, the case.